Welcome to Cracking the Rich Code TV. My name is Evan Sanchez and I'm going to be your host today. I have the privilege and honor of interviewing Jim Britt, the creator and founder of Cracking the Rich Code book series, as well as many businesses and many other top selling books. He's written over 15 books. He's coached some of the biggest names that you've ever heard of, including people like Tony Robbins, and he's also known as being one of the world's top 20 success coaches. I can't wait to dig in and learn what Jim's got going on today. Jim, how are you? Thank you for ha having us and uh, being part of the show. Hey, Evan. Well, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited to learn more about what you've got going on. I know that uh, every single Cracking the Rich Code book I think that has been released has gone to some type of number one status on Amazon. And I understand that you have some other things that you're doing to even go beyond the book series. So tell us a little bit about that coaching program you got going on. What's that about? Well, uh, and you're right, the book series, first of all, the first four have hit number one international bestseller on Amazon, and number five, we're just about to, to do the prom uh, promotion on that, and we're filling up book number six now with uh, top quality co-authors. And uh, yeah, the other program I have, uh, Cracking the Rich Code, is uh, an online program that uh, I launched uh, a few months back, and just getting amazing results for people. But basically what it does is it, uh, it focuses on the, the subconscious programming that people have that's been developed over a lifetime, um, you know, with various input from parents and teachers and uh, peer groups and television and, you know, on and on and on. We just, we develop these programs. Um, and because money is such a, uh, a prevalent thing in our society, uh, there's all types of views about money. So, you know, myself, I grew up uh, in a poor family. We didn't have a lot. So uh, that's the type of input I got. You know, we never have enough. We can't pay the bills. We, you know, we're late on something. I, I heard that all the time growing up. So my program focuses on helping to change that subconscious programming and a person's relationship uh, toward money. So I, I know for me personally, I remember growing up in a blue collar family is kind of the same thing. It was like we had money for what we needed, but if it was something extra, we didn't have money for that. And I know for me, as I grew older and older in my career, it was one of those things where I had to really think about like what, what was a lot of money and what was thinking big? Because as long as I had what I needed, I felt like I had enough. So is that an example of, of kind of what you're talking about? It's a, absolutely an example, you know, because um, if, you, if you look at people today in general, not everybody, but I'd say 90% of the population works uh, to, to survive, to pay their bills. And then they get a pay raise and they go, well, now I can, I can afford that nicer car or I can afford a bigger home or so they, they kind of adjust to the level of what they're earning. Right. So they never really get ahead financially. In fact, I read something that the Social Security Administration a few years back said that the average couple at retirement age had less than $7,000 in the bank. Yeah, and so you're saying that that overall result is basically because of the life events and it's, it's something that's subconscious that they're not even aware of. Yeah, you know, it's it, it, we grow up with it. I mean, my my first job was was picking cotton for two cents a pound at six <laughs> years old. Until I was about twelve, and uh, that didn't pay a lot. <laughs> and I, I bet I need to uh, go to a movie and get some popcorn and a soda. Um, and and then my first real job was working in a gas station pumping gas. I made a dollar an hour, sixty hours a week, and. Um, and I adjusted my lifestyle accordingly. We had a little tiny apartment that I kid about it, but it was was real. Uh, it was an apartment with a shared bathroom with another mm -hmm. apartment. And then the stairway to the one above me was inside my my apartment and, and it folded down and that was our bed uh, underneath that stairway. Mm -hmm. So we could hear people walking up the stairs right above our head. So 
that was how, you know, I, that's all I could afford. And, and then when I graduated to the uh, factory on the assembly line, I was now making $1.67 an hour. And, and we, we bought a small home, nothing down. I think it was maybe $10,000, $12,000 for the home. And, but it was small and we adjusted to that and we lived paycheck to paycheck. And I think we're just, you know, we're kind of ingrained that way, you know, to have things and do things and, and live uh, and many, many times beyond our, li uh, our limits, even or our means. And yeah. Cause I think, I yeah, you get that, you get that whole, uh, Oh, wow. I, I want that too. You know, we used to call it the Jones effect. I call it the Kardashian effect nowadays, but it's, you always want what other people have, and so then you kind of extend a little bit further. So tell me, like, was there a pivotal moment in your life where kind of the light bulb went off for you, or was it some type of, you know, event that took place that caused you to, you know, all of a sudden become conscious? Because what you're saying is this is subconscious. So what was it that helped you kind of get out of that thinking yourself? Well, I, I remember the, the, the initial turning point anyway was, um, you know, we, we had very little money. So when we buy school clothes uh, at the beginning of the, of the school year, we got two shirts and two pair of pants and one pair of socks <laughs> and a pair of tennis shoes. And that was about it. So I remember going in, I could pick out my own shirts within a price range. And so I found one that was green with a blue pattern. I just loved the shirt. So I bought that one. And then there was another one that flipped the same pattern instead of green with a blue pattern, it was blue with a green pattern. So the first one, first day of school, I got all kinds of compliments, great shirt, love that. I thought, wow, man, I'm, I'm looking good. And then uh, I switched the next day and I'd switch back and forth. And after about a week, somebody Somebody said, uh, hey, Brett, he says, uh, sure, but are you going to wear it the rest of the school year? And, and I said, well, I have two of them. I'm switching back and forth. They're two different colors. They go, yeah, right. So it became kind of a joke around the school that I was wearing the same shirt all year long. And at the end of the school year, never forget uh, uh, getting off the bus and some a bully type guy. He sticks his head out the window and he said, "Hey, Britt, get a get a new shirt next year." And it 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 really it upset me. It hurt. Um, sure, sure. And I wasn't sure what to do about it. And I went home that day. It had been raining, and and I walked to the back of the house and I ripped the shirt off my uh, my body and threw it on the ground and took a shirt and and beat it in the ground and then ultimately buried it. <laughs> and then we went in the house with the other shirt and buried that one. And, and then I stood there in tears and I said to myself, when I grow up, I'm never going to live like this. And to me, that was, a, I didn't know what that meant or how I change it, but I just kind of said, I'm going to do something different with my life. And that was kind of a turning point. But, um, you know, another turning point for me, I think the big turning point was, um, uh, I had, I had joined up with a uh, direct selling company and ended up with uh, a, a $4,000 loan to get involved with them. And I had to go to 23 banks and loan companies to get that loan, by the way. Um, and I worked the first year. I mean, I worked hard. I worked really hard. In fact, I remember the guy, uh, the training guy, he says, you've got to, your job is talking to people. He said, if you talk a little, you'll learn a little. If you talk a lot, you'll learn a lot. I said, well, how much is a little? He said, one a day. I said, well, how much is a lot? He said, 10 a day. I said, well, I'll do the 10. So I quit my job at the factory, uh, went out uh, to talk to 10 people every day about my business and my product. And the way I tracked it back then, I put 10 drives in my pocket. And every time I'd talk to somebody, I'd flip a bean away. And when I emptied my pocket, I could go home. So at the end of the first year, I had talked with over 3,650 people and all of them told me no. And wow. <laughs> I quit my job. I had no income. I had a notice on my door from the sheriff. Uh, my home had been foreclosed. Uh, it said, you have to be out in five days. 
I had no furniture that had been repoed. Both of my vehicles had been taken. I had a wife and a child and I had 15 cents in my pocket. And, but the one thing I knew I wasn't going to do was give up. And but that, that statement I made many years back when I was 12 years old, kept ringing in my ears, you know, I'm not going to live like this. Right. And I just right. wouldn't quit. Yeah. And, um, as a result of that, I think, uh, it was almost like a series of miracles took place over the next five days. But the first one and big one was a knock at my door. I opened the door and there's a guy from the company whom I'd never met. And he said, I understand you're a hard worker, but you're not making any money. I said, yeah, you're right. And he sat with me for two hours and he taught me what I was doing wrong, what I needed to be doing. And my business took off like a rocket. In fact, over the next 12 months, uh, I earned myself just under a million dollars from being wow. broke with it in my pocket. So it taught me a lot of things about me, about people, about telling me about not giving up. Um, that was a major, major turning point in my life. And I think, you know, a person has to decide what they're worth if they want to make more money. If they're, if they're getting by paycheck to paycheck, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what they like. They have to decide what it is to worth or what it is that they have to do to uh, accomplish that. Well, you are definitely one tough guy. It sounds like you are a back against the wall performer. Don't ever count Jim Britt out. He's going to come back and knock it out of the park. So yeah. is, is that, is that kind of what you are bringing to your coaching program and, and trying to, you know, do you run people through kind of their own life events? Do, how exactly do you help them transform uh, with your new coaching program? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, I, ha I had a conversation with a fellow just uh, a, a few weeks ago and he said, you know, he said, I haven't been able to pay my bills fully each month for 25 years. And I said, wow. I said, that's a long time. And I said, have you tried to change that? And he said, uh, yes, I have many, many times, but I don't seem to be able to change it. I keep ending up right back here. And I said, um, oh, he, he, then he told me, he said, I'm thinking about just cutting my overhead. I said, well, there's nothing wrong with that. But I said, in about two months, maybe three at the outside, you'll be back not being able to pay your bills on time again. He said, well, how do you know that? I said, because you're addicted to it. I said, yeah. you've got core beliefs that you can't pay your bills on time. And I said, until either you figure it out, which doesn't look like you're going to, or you have somebody like me or somebody else that can walk you through how to break that addictive cycle that you're in. I said, you'll live out the rest of your life not being able to pay your bills on time. And that's why the people are stuck like that. And it's a it's a it's an addiction and it's a it's like a self-imposed prison that they don't know they're in. And we all have it to or another, not not just about money. It could be about anything in our lives. You know, it could be about an abusive relationship and having a, a string of those. It could be about health uh, issues or weight loss or relationship anything we all have something that we're addicted to that we'd like to break out of that cycle that we get in you know we have an experience in our life and every experience we have we attach a feeling to it. right and as an example let's just say that um, somebody uh, let's say a parent tells a child that you'll never amount to anything and you'll never be successful now hopefully that wouldn't happen but I have seen it happen Right. Um, yeah. So uh, they had to that as a child, and they don't want to believe that that their parent is wrong. So they blame themselves for it. So maybe I won't ever amount to anything. They start thinking in that way, and then after a while, that that thinking turns into a belief, and that be becomes a core belief. And what we believe to be true, we always act out in our behavior. And our behaviors create another result. And that result creates another feeling. So it's like that we get in, it goes over and over and over. And every time you try to break out and fail, it strengthens the cycle. Right. It's like the fellow that couldn't pay the bills on time. It just keeps, and, and until you realize you're in it, 
uh, you, you can't break it. Uh, I mean, unless some big emotional event happens, and maybe sometimes people do, they, they break out of certain uh, molds that they're in. But it really is a prison, like self-imposed, that we don't know where we're in, break, break out of something that we have no idea how to get out of. I mean, it, it's, I'll give you an example. Uh, a woman in one of my workshops, she said, we we're talking about success, financial success, and she brought up the fact that she could never be successful financially because her father abused her verbally and told her she'd never measure, measure up to her siblings. She wasn't smart. She'd never get ahead of being in business. And and she she got that input all the way up until she left home. Wow. And I said, so father's the reason you can't be successful. And she said, yes. And I said, well, uh, where's your father right now? <laughs> And I thought maybe he's in the room or something. She said, oh, he died. Uh, I said, how long ago? She said, 10 years ago. I said, well, who's abusing you? She said, I don't understand that question. And I said, well, think about it for a minute. He's not here, so who's abusing you? So she thought about it. I came back in like 10 minutes, and I said, did you come up with the answer? She said, no. But I said, well, keep thinking. This happened four different times, and the fifth time I went over, that did you come up with the answer? She said, you mean I'm abusing me? I said, what do you think? She said, I don't know. Well, think about that one. So a few minutes later, I walked over. She said, I walked up to his, oh my God. She said, I'm keeping his abuse alive. She said, I'm carrying on his mission of abusing me. She said, I'm abusing me, which is true. But until somebody understands that they can't break the cycle she could live out the rest of her life not being able to get ahead financially because her father told her that she couldn't it was a program and and we will do almost anything to uh, prove to the, ourselves and the outside world that what we believe is true even to our detriment we do things that we we don't we don't really want in our lives, but we do it anyway. It's because of that. Well, I can, you know, see huge, tremendous value in anyone who chose to work with you. You know, you've already proven through some of your stories, even today, that you're a guy who fights and doesn't give up and also understands how to find what people really need to do in order to create real change. You know, I've heard those um, thoughts can be like, you know, a well-traveled road in the grass, you know, where the more times it's mowed over, it just gets harder and harder and harder to get out of those. And I can see how a coaching program, something like Cracking the Rich Code, would help people to actually break those roads or get off onto a new track so that they could improve their lives. So, Jim, you know, thank you so much for being on the show today. I've really enjoyed listening to you, learning from you as usual. Can you tell us a little bit about how somebody can connect with you to either join your coaching program or be a part of, you know, something else that you're doing? Well, you can uh, connect with the coaching program. It's, uh, it's crackingtherichcode.com. Uh, you can also find it on my website, jimbritt.com. And the coaching program is a four month program and it's designed to reprogram your subconscious regarding money. Uh, that's, that's the only purpose of it. Gotcha. And you get daily input in either videos or audios. You get lessons uh, via video. You get audio, uh, an audio series that you listen to the full audio series uh, during each month of the program. You get a master lesson that's about 45 minutes to an hour long each month. And some of them, you think, well, this has nothing to do with money, but it does. It has something to do with your self-worth and, and your financial. So it's repeated input over a period of time that's designed to reprogram you regarding your relationship with money. And you can look at some of the testimonies and be pretty, pretty amazing what's happening for, for a lot of other people. But, you know, to... To get ahead in today's world uh, financially, uh, number one, you have to have a desire to change. You got to be willing to, uh, to step up 
you know, and most people have a desire. I, I, I think you could ask almost anybody and they'd say, yeah, I want, I want more money in my life. Uh, but how many people actually go out and get it? Not that many. Uh, so you've got to take it to the next step, which changes your whole, your whole presence in the world. And that's making a decision to have it, whatever it is you want, that doesn't allow for anything less than that. You want to become a millionaire? And decide that first before you even know how to do it. Because what happens is when you change, when you make a decision to have a certain thing, your view of the world changes. Uh, you see things you'd never saw, uh, would never see before. And the view of the world, the view that the world has of you changes. So the support that you gain uh, is out there. It's just waiting for you to make the decision that you're gonna have a certain thing in order for the, the answers to come to you and the circumstances to show up or the people that's gonna show up and support you. So, you know, in today's world, you gotta be bold. You gotta put yourself out there and you gotta be willing to uh, step out of your comfort zone and experience a little bit of pain uh, to get what you want in life. Because if you're not experiencing any pain moving forward, you're probably not moving forward, you're probably standing still. So uh, that's so important. And the last thing, is you gotta be willing to let go of, of things that you can't control. Now, if you look at stress and things that a lot of people experience these days, uh, stress comes from trying to control things that's beyond your control. So I'd say, learn to let go of that and, and move past it. And the things that don't work, learn to let go of that, learn from it and keep moving forward. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you for, you know, putting the Cracking the Rich Code book series together and for joining us here today on the first episode of Cracking the Rich Code TV. My name is Evan Sanchez, and I'm wishing you all the success that you desire today, tomorrow, and in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in.